What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna take a trip to Colorado with insulation load. If you wanna know how to secure that on a flatbed, make sure to stay tuned. So guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome to the channel. Thank you for coming. If it's not, thank you for coming back. From California, we're going to Denver, Colorado with this load. You have to be particularly careful with these loads because they are not that very heavy and insulation is very fragile and you can't super tighten the straps when you, uh, when you secure it. So let me go through it real quickly here as I'm waiting for my buddy in front of me to finish with his tarps. I already asked if he needed help. He said, no, he got it. So I'll let him handle it because I'm sure I'm going to handle it myself. So, um, but let's run through this real quick, guys. It's a full load. Hope you can see it. Let me brighten this up just a little bit more. But there it is, guys. It's a full load of insulation. I have a total of 13 straps on this one. And as you can see, I have corner protectors or edge protectors at the top. And this particular customer, they provide the edge protectors. So that's a good thing because we don't have to worry about having them. Sometimes we do have to worry about having those and the company doesn't provide you those just in case you didn't know. Melton does not provide you those. You have to either get them through a customer like this where you can take advantage and have a few when you're done or you have to purchase them yourself. But um, that's just the way it works. They don't supply those for you. Or if you go to another way of getting them, if, if you go through a terminal, and just get lucky that there's some hanging around from a previous truck driver that left them in their truck, then make sure to grab those as soon as you see them. Don't wait, because they won't be there long. But um, as you can see there, I have 13 strap edge protectors, and my tires are already up there. Forklift drivers already put them up there for us. We just gotta use this new tapering station to secure them as you see my buddy up there. Uh, unfortunately, I can't zoom in. This is not a zoom lens, but you can go ahead and use a tarping station. Last time I was here, I was supposed to pick up a load like this, and I ended up picking up like three, four pallets uh, only, and it was like not even 2,000 pounds. This time, they switched the load again, but it's a full load of insulation. So um, it's actually the first time that I get to have a full load here, uh, but it's my second time here, and the first time they did not have that tarping station. We had to watch a video coming in real quick, just showing you how to work the tarping station, how it works and the safety and all that. Um, some, some shippers uh, do have that as well, where you are required to watch a safety video before you secure your load and you get loaded. Uh, so also keep that in mind, you have to walk in and watch a quick video when you check in. And that's just for safety and that you follow their regulation on how, is, how to safely secure the load how to safely secure the load and tarp it or use our tarping station on how the system works. Some plants are very big. I picked up some uh, coils at some big, uh, big plants and so they have a whole process. So the video kind of just summarizes it for the driver so that way you're aware of what you're expected to do and you don't have to be asking a bunch of questions. So, um, But anyway, we're gonna wait for our buddy up there to uh, finish tarping his load and securing. I'll probably ask him one more time if he wants help. He seems to have been uh, there for a while plus sometimes speaking of that sometimes you want to help somebody else but they may tell you no not because they don't want the help but because they don't want to be required to then have to wait to help you you see we all run in our we may work for the same company and all but we all have individual clocks that we have to manage and our own time clock to manage so um he may have a similar amount of hours or just running on his clock. That's how I am right now. I only have about a little over six hours on my 14 that is counting down as I'm waiting on him to finish so I can finish. I just got to move a cut like three, four dunnages to the back and secure it here. Um, after I end up tarping, that's, I'm going to do that. That way they're not on my way. But he wants to run and go as far as we, he can go and get to a truck stop before it's too late and all that kind of stuff. I want to do the same. Um, but if, he, if we help each other, yes, we can kind of get out of here at the same time and that would be a mentality. But some people, they rather just like do their job and move on and just don't have to worry about um, just having to obligate it to stay and help somebody else while the clock is ticking. So um, don't take that. I don't take it personally. It's fine because uh, I'm thinking about my clock. So I don't take it personally that he doesn't want my help. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't mind helping him just so he can move out my way and I can do mine fast, uh, you know, get, get to start topping mine uh, as quick as possible. So that would be me, but I always ask first 
and if which I did earlier if he wanted some help he said no he didn't say anything about wanting help tarping so I'll always ask first uh, I'll probably go and ask one more time since he's tarping and I'm right behind him but if he says no I'm like I'm not gonna take it personally it's cool I get it he doesn't want to feel obligated to help me I probably tell him that you know like hey don't worry about it. you don't have to stay and help me I just want to help you you know secure it so you get out the way another reason why why they might say no is they might notice that you are fairly new or you're newer than them because they're older and blah 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 and so they have their own way of securing their tarps or securing their load and they don't want you to do it differently and then they feel that ADD that they have to go fix it after you because you didn't do it exactly like they do it it doesn't mean that you did it wrong it's just it's just different so um, don't think those things personally if you're new and you're trying to help and you got to be proactive you got to be you know you want to be that company driver why not hey not everybody's the same so just take it as it is and move on do your job do your take care of yourself make sure you cover yourself and uh, you're good to go so uh so but anyway enough rambling for now i just want to share that with you as a tip and uh but we're going to get this tarp and load it and then head on and see how far as we can get to another tip is to make sure you look at weather where you're going this way winter's coming there's already been some snow through wyoming uh, I already checked and it looks clear as far as the Wyoming State uh, 511 app. It looks like it's clear for the next couple of days. It doesn't mean that there's no snow. It just means there's no jams and no closures right now. So I will keep an eye on that tonight as well because that's the fastest route to get to uh, 80 and then down 25 to Denver. Aurora, Colorado is where we're going with the slow, which is just East Denver pretty much where is that. So anyway, enough rambling. Thanks for watching. Again, if you're liking the content, guys, make sure to hit that like button for me. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. I know a lot of you guys watching, maybe you have not subscribed. Make sure to subscribe. It helps the channel. I truly appreciate it. So let's get going here. Let's tarp and uh, get on the road. See you then. What's up guys, just a quick update here. Luis here again. We are just entering Utah, passing by but what I believe is called the Salt Flats or the Salt Desert, whatever here in Utah. Last time I came through here, super windy and the storm was coming through, so it was raining. Uh, no way to stop and enjoy it, but it was still freaking interesting. But I know camera doesn't do it justice. This is kind of my last quick low tech tire check before I head up to the truck stop. We're gonna go, it's about 90 miles, a little less. But check this out, guys. If you have not been through here, this is 80, just entering Utah, uh, coming from westbound. But all that you see over there, you can see people. I can't zoom in, unfortunately. Go to my Instagram, I'll get some, you'll see some pictures. But uh, you see cars on that side. Uh, people like to drive on it, take pictures of their cars and stuff. Uh, you, I'm a photographer, so I've seen plenty of model shots and car shots, and uh, if, if you research it, but that's all, that's, this is where it is. If you ever wonder where this, you know, where that desert is or that salt white looking sand is, this is where it is, guys. Just wanted to give you that update. We're gonna keep on going, update you uh, when we stop. All right, see you guys later. What up, guys? Good morning, good morning. It's Monday morning. And I'm moving a crane. Interesting, you don't see these moving very often. But, uh, He's rolling it slowly, but uh, yeah, you guys see that, it's pretty interesting. Sorry I can't zoom you guys in. But we are unloaded on this load out here in Colorado. Went away for this guy to move out of the way. There's a couple of melting trucks here actually with me. And then uh, we gotta wait for him to kind of move that thing where it's gonna go and then we can get out of here. But the, already empty as you can see behind me, we're empty. Uh, if you see the warehouse behind me, show you real quick. Sorry about the sun. But let's see if I can hide you back here for a second. No, nope, that doesn't help. But anyway, this warehouse behind me, um, it's a food distribution center. I uh, forgot the name of the company, but it's a food distribution center. 
But one thing that he told me real quick that I just want to share is the freezer is about the size of a football field, not a little larger than that. That's a large freezer. So pretty interesting places where we deliver, and that's part of, part of Flatbed, and it's different. It's not just a warehouse. If you're interested in Flatbed, you get to go to interesting places like this. It's not always fun when it's wet, but it's cool. But anyway, we're going to keep going, guys. Hope you guys are enjoying the video. Make sure to hit that like button if you're enjoying the content. And comment below. See you on the next video, guys. Peace.